So uh, welcome everyone. This mastermind is with Kino Body, Greg O'Gallagher. What's going on, dude? How are you? Pleasure to have you. Uh, this is a special mastermind because a lot of our masterminds are with our Z instructors, um, but then we have these very special ones, very few, with uh, fitness celebrities that are also associated with RSD uh, in, in several ways, right? So we've had the pleasure of uh, meeting each other at the Strength Camp Challenge. Uh, Greg came for the Strength Camp Challenge. Elliot invited him uh, as one of the Avengers. Uh, it was really good. And, uh, you know, I learned a lot about you even before that as well as after that uh, in terms of intermittent fasting and the, the tips that you give to people because it's, it's such a discipline, it's, it's so hard to do, especially if you're used to eating those five, six meals a day that we've been told to do, you know, uh, for the, the stupid people mm -hmm. of the past. Uh, it's gonna slow down your metabolism and so on and so forth. So uh, let's get started with sort of uh, what, if you had a, like a takeaway, right? So your entire, your entire career, your entire life you've dedicated to contributing to fitness and providing value to the world, uh, not just increase your testosterone and, and kind of you know, get more fit and f feel more healthy, but also to get the physique that people desire, right? So you're customizing physique types to what people want. Because you, you don't want to just, if some guy wants to bulk, you're not going to say, oh, here, do this. You're going to have him bulk. So your entire career up to this point, what takeaway would someone who doesn't know anything about you what takeaway would he get from you? And what value can you provide for well, think, someone like that? I think more than anything with Kino Body, I really try and penetrate through all the bullshit and give people exactly what it takes to achieve the results they want. And so that's why um, people really resonate with my approach that finally makes sense. So on one hand, getting the body you want comes down to leanness, definition, having that low body fat. And as you know, you know having too much body fat contributes um, to estrogen and produces testosterone. So on one hand, it's about having that low body fat and how do we do that? And that's pretty much from creating that calorie deficit that taps into body fat. And stuff like intermittent fasting just makes that way easier. Because instead of eating five, six meals a day and trying to eat at a deficit, we have to have small meals. Now you can eat the foods you want. And then the benefits to fasting with increased growth hormone and it really works with your body and puts you in that anabolic state. It balances that catabolic, that fat burning with like the ability to recharge. So IF works really well within that context. And the other part of it is building the muscle. Right. And the easiest, most simple, logical way to look at muscle growth is it's a functional adaptation. We're not building muscle because we're not telling our body, oh, let's look sexy, let's put on muscle. Yeah. We're telling our body, hey, we have this challenge that we're dealing with you know, every week and we're in, like, imposing loads onto ourselves. We need to overcome that. And we overcome that by you know, building more muscle so we can ha handle heavier weights and handle you know, more, more training. So I think people get so focused on like, trying to put on weight on the scale, mm. um, which is a very, it's a losing proposition because if you're trying to gain muscle and you're like, oh, I want to gain 20 pounds, you look at the skill weight, that 20 pounds could be 20 pounds of fat. So you have to, you know, if you have to look at, okay, if I want to gain 20 pounds, well, that's what I tell people. I'm like, let's say you can only do five chin ups, let's say you can only bench press 135 pounds. If you want to gain 20 pounds of muscle, if, you, if those lifts don't change, you're not going to put on muscle. So it's like, let's get you up to doing 50 pound chin ups for five reps. Let's get you up to 200 pound bench for five reps. Let's get you up to doing 250 pound squats for five reps. Those lifts are going to drive muscle growth. Gotcha. Um, so if you're, you know, if you're eating properly, if you're training properly, um, and let's say you take your lifts up 30, 40, 50 pounds, you have there's no way in which your your body isn't going to change. You're not going to have someone that's doing 100 pound chin ups, you know, incline pressing 250 for reps, and that is like, oh, I just can't get my muscles to grow. I just can't, you know, I'm just chest not growing. So it's yeah, a combination yeah. of you know getting really lean through proper dieting, you know, making making sure you're getting sufficient protein, fats, and carbs. A lot of the diet industry likes to demonize something. You know, let's cut out carbs to get lean. Let's cut out fat to get lean, um, which is, I think, horrible. Um, so getting the proper amount of calories, good amount of sufficient protein, nice balance of you know foods, and then training to get stronger. When you start doing those things together, you don't have to spend seven days in the in the gym every day. You don't have to you know obsess about oh I had a little bit of chocolate. It's like no, you're hitting the calorie the right calorie intake. You're getting sufficient protein. You're training and you're getting stronger. It's like as long as you got that in, and you don't have to obsess about all this other nonsense. You don't have to obsess about oh you know. 
uh, just like if I'm having the perfect, you know, my, it's like to th just do that and you'll yeah. see amazing results. And I think people put so much effort into like trying to just, they're obsessed with their diet, what they're putting in their, like they're just chronically obsessed about it. It's like, oh, am I allowed to have this on my diet? And they're constantly obsessed, but what training routine am, am, am I doing? I'm like, dude, are you hitting the right amount of calories to, to get lean for your goal, to build muscle? Like, are you eating a, a surplus to gain? Are you eating it? And they're like, oh, I don't know. I'm just, I'm, I'm eating chicken and broccoli and, and, and brown rice. I'm like, well, how many calories? Like, I, I don't know. I'm like, well, if you're gonna, if your goals get leaner, we're gonna make sure you're eating a deficit. And they have no idea of the important stuff. So people are like, so like, fo like, so obsessed with like all this idea of like the perfect plan of like eating clean and, and this six meals and every two hours, they forget about the important stuff. Are you getting stronger? Are you getting the right amount of calories? If you're not doing those two, it doesn't matter if you're training six hours a day or eating. You right. Know. So I get people to focus on what matters, and in turn, they see incredible results in the most like effortless way possible. Got it. You talked about uh, the bullshit. There's a lot of bullshit uh, in the industry. A lot of people are, they have hidden agendas because they want to make money and they want to sell stuff. Uh, do you know what someone can do? So a confused kid, right? Some kid with, uh, doesn't even have to be an RSD student. It could just be someone who's trying to get stronger, trying to look better. Because a lot of people get into this because they want to look better. They don't give a shit about strength, mm -hmm. right? But you're saying that obviously they're correlated. Well, how should they start? What should they do? You know what I would say is the main, the main driver of finding out what's going to work best for you is being methodical. It's uh, taking the time to go into the mirror, take a picture of yourself, weigh yourself, take your waist measurements, take your arm measurements, um, go into the gym, see how much weight you can lift with proper form, get all this data, right? You got all this data yeah. or data. Do you say data or data? I don't know. I'm Canadian. Data. So data. <laughs> data. Okay. I'm, I'm Canadian say too, data. so yeah. we say data. Okay. So, data. so get, you have now, now, before you even start something, have all this data of like, you know what? Okay, I weigh 150 pounds. My waist is 34 inches. I can bench press, you know, 100 pounds for five. You get all this data. It's like, okay, now what we want is we want to make sure that, you know, your strength is going up. We don't want your weight, if, if your goal is to stay lean and build muscle, you don't want your waist to go up. You don't want your waist to go into 35, 36. It means you're getting fat. Right. So you wanna have all this data, and then you know what? You could follow a shitty program. You could follow a really crappy program, and then you might figure it out. You'd be like, holy crap, you know what? Um, my arms are, aren't changing, you know? My, you know? my weight's going up, but I shouldn't put on fat, and my strength's the same. It's like, okay, well, this isn't working, so let's try something different. And then you might do something which you know you think what how you might do something which you think there's no way this is going to work. There's no way this is going to work, and then because you like you maybe you're doing like training less. You're training three days a week, but you're doing something really simple. Then you might be, might be like, holy crap, my bench went up 20 pounds this month. My chest is up an inch. My waist is the same. Yeah. It's like so. That's how I created my fitness approaches. I was doing tons of different workout programs, but I was tracking, taking pictures. I was tracking my waist, tracking my lifts, and seeing what was working and just evaluating the results. And what I came to the conclusion is that the way I'm gonna improve my physique is getting stronger on these key lifts. So that's what I talk, that's what I talk about heavily with Kino Body. Right. Um, because the, the danger is that if you're not focused on getting stronger on key lifts, you're gonna be focused on just adding weight to the scale and that won't reflect you know, muscle growth. That will just reflect a combination of both. So someone will put on 20 pounds but they'll go up to 50% body fat and they won't look better. Um, <laughs> this is the biggest predictor of, of aesthetics is relative strength. How strong are you relative to your body weight? If you can bench 250 and you're only 170, you're gonna have a good physique. But if you're 220 pounds, you're benching 250, it, then your physique won't look good because uh, relative strength is an indicator of how much muscle you have relative to the fat mass. It. It's hard to have relative strength if you have excess body fat. Um, simply because all that fat, excess fat you have doesn't help you lift more weight, so your relative strength will be skewed. So you wanna focus on those variables and then try different programs and test and see if it's working. And the beauty is if you're a beginner, as long as you're tracking progress, you could make results on a crappy program because you're simply a beginner, your body's not used to it, so it's gonna adapt. And then eventually that beginner program or that crap program isn't gonna work anymore and then you're gonna try something different. So I don't even tell people necessarily to follow my stuff. I tell them if what you're doing is working, you're getting results, keep going. Then if you had a plateau, something's not working, then try my stuff. Gotcha. But I see people just so focused on finding the perfect program, they're not even tracking their stuff they're doing. Right. Um, so that's how you cut through the bullshit is you track progress and instead of blindly doing things. Same thing if you're doing a diet and your diet's like, okay, I'm gonna do you know this really low fat diet and I'm gonna just keep my fat really low. And you start to do that and you're like, holy crap, actually this isn't working, my result, I'm not seeing the, the fat loss. Then it's like, okay, we'll try something different. But it all comes down to, as I said earlier, is you know, for fat loss, are you hitting that calorie deficit and making sure you get sufficient protein and a good balance of nutrients? 
you're gonna see fat loss. Yes. Maybe you'll have a maybe you'll have like a plateau for a couple weeks where you don't because the scale doesn't always go down linearly. Sometimes it, it kind of goes up and down like this. So you gotta kind of look at the overall big picture too. Right. Um, but if, but then same thing if you're getting adding weight to the bar, your bench is up 20 pounds, your your chest and everything will improve. And and yes, you can't just go into the gym and just do one set and get stronger and build muscle. You need that balance of getting of you know intensity, you know increasing the weight you're lifting and getting in sufficient volume to you know getting in, you know few hard good sets for a couple exercises, um, you know for each muscle group. And then the combination of getting stronger and then getting sufficient volume will produce muscle growth. Um, and that's and then also with my with my stuff, Kino Body, I design design the workouts in a way that builds that physique that people want. So a lot of the bodybuilder routines are focused on just um, a setup that kind of doesn't result in the aesthetic physique you want. So I focus a lot on hitting the upper chest, you know, pu putting a lot of work onto the delts, getting that wide back from pull ups, you know, putting in a little bit of work on the legs, but not overdoing the legs. So you don't get the, the bulky chafe where you can't wear the slim fit pants. So I, I kind of craft it towards this physique that I think is cool and the physique I want. Kind of like Brad Pitt and Troy, where he kind of just looks so damn good, but it's like lean, and he's got a like square chest, and it's got like that that sex appeal to women, as opposed to just kind of being bulky and, and just kind of puffy and like low hanging tits. Right, right. So right. that's how I craft my courses, which makes them really unique. So you're getting stronger, you're doing all those things that matter, but within the context of building this cool physique type. Gotcha. Yeah. So speaking of Kino body, a lot of the pickup community, there's something known as Kino escalation. Right, so there's there's a stack of uh, different. Uh, it's a it's like think of it like a protocol, right? Mm -hmm. So like, what do you do first? You you first have to touch the girl, then you have to kiss the girl. So there's a stack Dude. that was developed like yeah. 30 years ago by somebody. So it's keno escalation now. Now we have keno body, right? So speaking of pickup and confidence, mm -hmm. right? Have you because obviously you weren't always like this. Mm -hmm. you know, you've gone through a transformation yourself in your physique. What have you seen in terms of uh, approach anxiety or confidence? So when you go to a club, I mean, we've pimped together, mm -hmm. uh, but I want you know want you to tell the, the audience when you go to a club or you anywhere you see a girl, has there been a change in your approach to talking to the girl as well as just the way you feel inside your inner security and inner peace before you actually go and pimp? Right. Well, I mean, I'll say a few points. The first is when I created Kino Body, I actually I was aware of the seduction industry, nice. and the whole idea was building this body girls can't keep their hands off of, so they have to Kino you. They want to fucking ah. touch you. Yeah, yeah. That was the whole spin off. But I never really told people that. I just kind of kept this like a cool little secret that Very people cool. kind of figure on their own. <laughs> secrets out. Yeah, secret, <laughs> secrets out. I know. <laughs> I spoiled the prize. Love of it. The Love surprise. It. Um, but I think there's like two things. Like you know, when you have when, like if you're not comfortable in your own skin, if you're not confident with the body you have, if you kind of look in the mirror and you're like not happy with what you see and you're just like, ugh, it's going to derail a lot of your confidence with approaching women and in life in general. So on one hand, it's like when you build that body that you're proud of um, and you're just confident, then you'll have more confidence and more self-belief and even more um, charisma when you talk to girls because you feel comfortable in your skin, you're happy with the results that you have. Very cool. um, so on one level, you're, just the way you carry yourself will be improved, that, you know, that inner game kind of thing. But on another level, it's like when you have like a, you know, because when I, I was shy as a kid and then I started to get results training and I started to build muscle, gave me that confidence, like not the confidence just because I look better, but the confidence because I could do something. I know, knew that every, I was changing my body. Every week I was coming and I was getting stronger. And so it's like, oh, if I can do this, I can do anything. I can get better at you know, school. I can get better, I can build a business. You know, mm -hmm. I can you know, you know, approach beautiful women. And so yeah, so then there's like that whole inner game that kind of improves when you challenge yourself and you build this better physique. But then of course, you know, a lot of the girls, they, they like the nice bodies. And it just kind of, it, it kind of, it, it, so, some girls will like, you know, with the, the body, some girls will be like, oh, that, it's like a nice plus. Other girls are like, that guy's got a nice body. I want to fuck him tonight. It, you get, there's, there's, there's the two different parallels. Um, but it makes a big difference with meeting women. And also, like, you know how, like, they, you know how girls are like, like, guys are more, like, more about looks than girls are? I mean, it still plays into it at a big point, especially, like, in the bedroom, like, when you're having sex. It's like, it, like, the fucking, the, the looks do matter. And if, if like if a girl is sleeping with a guy like that's just lean and muscular and fit and like got the abs and rock hard, it just turbocharges this this sexual experience for her because it's like fucking Achilles of fucking Troy is having sex with her. 
But if you have some dude that's like Seth Rogen, I mean, he could have the best. Another he could, Canadian. He could, he, could, he could be the most confident, the most confident, charismatic, funny, likable dude. Yeah. You know, have killer game, but she's fucking Seth Rogen. You know, so the way I see it is, you know, building a greater, a better body isn't going to solve all your issues. It's not going to. It's like you could, you could, if you're still you don't want to talk to girls, or you don't want to take any action, or you don't want to work on improving your personality and, and whatnot. It's not going to do much. But when you have, you know, when you kind of go out, put yourself out there, you meet girls, you talk, you, you know, work on your social skills, and then you have like this sweet body, it just makes it way easier. Awesome. That's yeah, how I look at it. What are your thoughts no, on that, though? My thoughts are the same. My thoughts are if there's any parameter in your game, right? Because a lot of people think game is psychology, human psychology. The way I think of it, and this is something that I learned in Vegas, you know, Hung and I, we, we learned this in Vegas together, other people too. Game is an equation, and looks are part of that equation. Money is part of that equation. And for, it's also the, the concept of self-image, right? If you're taking care of yourself, then your, your, your brain is like, oh, this guy is lifting. This guy's getting stronger. He's taking care of himself. He should be fucking beautiful women. So that, that's kind of like a self-image thing too. Um, I also want to get your thoughts on that. Because a lot of people, if they do a quick change in their body, so let's say someone gets a plastic surgery done, yeah. their self-image is still the same. Really? Okay. Right? So th this is a, there's this book, uh, Psycho, -Cybernet Psycho Cybernetics. That book, yeah. And the guy who wrote it, Maxwell Maltz, he's a plastic surgeon, or he was. And he, he was saying, you know what, I would make this girl really beautiful, right? Big tits, nice ass. But she would still have very low self-esteem because it changed too fast, right? The brain, it, it doesn't understand. There's no work being done. It's like when Britney Spears went bald, right? She's just like, she got this fame and she's like, oh, I don't know what to do with it. And then, and then you know, all downhill, now she's doing well again. But is there a, have you seen that in, in, in all your clients in terms of their self-image kind of changes? Like they become different people from the inside yeah, and, have, and yourself. Yeah, I do uh, this thing where, I have people that follow my courses. I have I give them the opportunity to submit a transformation, which I'll post on my site. We get tons of, of them submitted, and it's hard to keep up and post them because you, you gotta you gotta go through all, like gotta whatever do work to, to put them up on the site and right, right. and whatnot. But w the last question is like you know how has this journey, this three months or two months or six months, changed your life? And in every case, it's unbelievable what happens when they go through this process of actually changing the behaviors, training putting in the work on tracking their nutrition, like taking control of their life. And then all of a sudden they, 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 they feel more confident. You know, their, their dating life has improved massively. Right. You know, um, they're getting more attention than ever and they just feel like they have the confidence to go after other goals. And it's like the common theme is when you, when you tackle this fitness thing and you take control of your health and your physique and the way you look, it's like everything just becomes better. You know, um, but you're right. Like if it was just be a quick fix, hmm. just take some steroids, just get some plastic surgery, um, then it, yeah, there's there's no time and no work and, and, and no self learning and, and growth, personal right. growth involved in that. And so gotcha. it's just like, you know, it, it's just it's meaningless. You know, same thing. It's like if you have a video game and you just get all the cheat, cheat codes, codes and then you just yeah. skip the last level. It's like that wasn't fun. That's fucking. Right. You're bored of it in a second or whatever. Right. Good, good. That, so, the, yeah, the, uh, the quick fix doesn't work. Um, speaking of sexual activity and uh, fucking girls, I, I think in, in 10 years from now, you're going to be known as, like, the father of intermittent fasting. Even though you didn't invent it, right, even though it's been there for centuries, the, the amount of work you're doing, the, the amount of contribution you're putting out there about the importance of intermittent fasting, the types of intermittent fasting, how is it going to change your life, and... Not just that, just the tips you give, right? The stuff you've taught me, like for example, the uh, sparkling water it in helps. the morning. Dude, it, it helps. helps, crazy helps. Yeah. Uh, the coffee in the morning, just uh, just getting, cause you know, Hung was asking me this morning, like, hey man, how long have you been doing intermittent fasting? I'm like, oh, for a while, like eight months. Uh, and it's, uh, it helps a lot. Yeah. Now the, the question a lot of people ask is, well, if I do intermittent fasting, am I going to lose muscle? Am I going to not be able to perform in bed as, as well? Or am I going to feel hungry, therefore the mental clarity won't be there? So for me, specifically, my mental clarity is better, 
right? So a lot of the times in the morning, especially at strength camp, what I do is I wake up and I first go to the sauna while I'm in an intermittent fasting mode. So now I'm depleting all the sodium and you know, all the toxins, but at the same time, I am also hungry, you know, hungry, so to say. And, and I also feel that that hungry state is when our fat is being burned. That's, that's why you feel hungry. You're, you know. um, so what are your thoughts on the relationship between intermittent fasting? First of all, just give a little introduction to it. So a lot of people don't know what the fuck intermittent fasting even is. Uh, so give a little introduction and how that has helped you or how that has influenced your sex life as well as your mental clarity. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so intermittent fasting, the way I teach it is simply um, getting rid of this whole idea you have to eat first thing in the morning. So get rid of that. Your body does not need food in the morning. In fact, there's a lot of mechanisms in place which give you immense benefits towards not eating first thing in the morning, i.e., you know, insulin low, um, growth hormone is high, fat mobilization is peaking. Um, the way our cortisol, like our hormones work, it's actually, we want to have cortisol high in the morning when insulin's low, it helps mobilize body fat, as long as it's not chronic. Um, it just, it, it, it's, you know, norepinephrine goes up, so you have more mental alertness and focus and energy. You're stimulating that, that sympathetic nervous system, which keeps you alert, focused, and energetic. So, I mean, it, it's actually, I think humans have evolved and, and we're kind of meant to go through periods of, you know, like in the day with like, you know, low food, like not eating, and then eating a lot. But kind of, we've been kind of trained to believe mm. that we have to eat small meals, like small little meals. It's like, there's no yeah. fun in that. It's just like, you know, little slaves, like taking small meals and just yeah. being like given just enough. It's, there's no fun in that. Yeah. We're meant to, you know, fat. If you talk to most people, actually, they, they don't mind going hours without food as long as they can have that big meal. Mm -hmm. um, and it might seem weird at first if you're not used to that, but you'll, you, it, like, you just fall in love with it. That's Brazilian why. Brazilian buffet. Yeah. Brazilian, we're hitting the Brazilian, the Brazilian <laughs> buffet. Um, so that's the whole concept of intermittent fasting. Don't eat first thing in the morning. You don't have to go crazy, but let's say you wake up at eight, maybe go to one o'clock, have, a, have, a, have some lunch, have a big dinner, and then have you know, a snack at night, and there you go. Now you can have a big lunch, a big dinner, go out and have steak and potatoes, and still drop that body fat, and still you know, stay lean if you're trying to bulk up. Um, that's the concept I teach it. I don't go crazy strict, like, oh, it has to be this time, this time. It's just the whole benefit of intermittent fasting is getting rid of eating right when you wake up, and pushing that a few hours so you can experience all these amazing benefits. Some people want to go you know, four hours after waking. Mm -hmm. Some people want to go eight. I'll, I'll kind of mix it up. Usually I'll go six to eight hours, listen to my body. Um, if I'm hungry before I'm going to have dinner or you know, my first meal of the day, I might have an apple just to kind of stave off appetite. You're breaking the fast, but it's okay because you're, you're just kind of helping yourself go a little bit longer till you actually heat that, eat that, big, that big meal. Um, that's the way I teach intermittent fasting. And I've talked to a lot of people. I've put out tons of videos on fasting and the comments and every, all experiences I hear people, you know, I wouldn't teach this stuff if people didn't get incredible results with it. But I get hundreds of comments like, this has changed my life. I've lost fat so, like, so much more easily. Julian Blanc, uh, he's telling me that he started doing it. When we, when we started connecting, he's down 20 pounds. Yeah. It's easy. Yeah, he looks good. He looks pretty, yeah, he looks pretty good. Um, I did a video recently about intermittent fasting for productivity and mental clarity, and people were like, oh my God, it's so true, like, it's so much easier. It might not happen right away. It might take you a week or two weeks to adapt to the whole intermittent fasting thing, so now you feel all those benefits. Mm -hmm. um, but, I mean, there's huge benefits. Um, intermittent fasting helps increase this process in which your body recycles waste materials, neuronal autoph autophagy, mm -hmm. which helps in brain health. Um, it, 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 it actually is reduces the risk of like Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, neurodegenerative diseases. I mean, intermittent fasting is great for overall health and, and, and brain function. So in that sense, um, you should be able to experience good results with, you know, fasting and being more productive because now you don't have to cook and clean and prepare meals. You know, sometimes when you eat, we want to keep eating. It's like, oh, I had breakfast. Now I'm thinking about having that muffin or whatever. And so that's <laughs> me. It's like if I start eating in the morning, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just want to keep eating. And some people even huh. say that in the morning when cortisol is high, um, and when you, you know, spike insulin when cortisol is high by eating, it can trigger um, a rapid drop in, in blood sugar, That's right. um, which can cause that, that hunger 30 to 60 minutes later. So you eat breakfast in the morning, you spike you know, your, your um, insulin, now blood sugar crashes, and now you're like, now you get those cravings to kind of eat something, and, you're in this, and then it's really hard to get lean because you're just constantly thinking about food. Yeah. Get rid of that, now you're clear, you're not worried about eating, you just have this mental clarity and um, really strong focus and, and discipline. I find that when I, since I've been doing intermittent fasting, my willpower is higher as far as doing work. Hmm. I don't like during the day when I'm fasting, I just want to work. I'm down to go and do, and, and do some articles and, and write on new courses and interact with people. 
um, in a work context. Whereas if I was when I used to do breakfast, I'd be like, ah, oh, you kind of just I'm like, oh, I'll just play some video games, or whatever. So I just find it really it really sets the stage for changing your whole life in general. And as far as women and fasting, it gives you that freedom. So you don't like that loser that's like eating chicken bread, like you know Tupperware, like at a Tupperware every two or three hours. It gives you that freedom mm. to go out and you want to get dinner and drinks with a girl, you can. Mm. So you have that while staying lean, so you have that freedom. Um, and I mean, there's 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 benefits towards um, intermittent fasting with testosterone. Um, and uh, so I mean, I, when I started doing intermittent fasting and having those ability to eat big at night, eat those big meals, I woke up much more, you know, way better boners and everything. And, and, and I've had I've had tons of sex while fasting. I think I think people are so conditioned to believe like, oh, you have to have food, you have to you know eat to be able to function. That it, it that almost scares them. And once you get rid of that whole mentality and just realize that being in that fasted state is so good for you. It's so good for you. I'm not talking about fasting for a week. Just you know, push that first meal four, five, six hours. And doing that every day is so good for you. It gives you this amazing chance for your body to experience all these health benefits. Do it. And then once you realize it's good for you and it's, you don't need to constantly feed yourself in order to function, then you're going to be able to like just function very, very, very well. Yeah. You know, one, one thing I feel is that people are so conditioned to eating a certain way, right? So like my parents, for example, I tell them to do intermittent fasting, but my dad, he'll wake up in the morning, he'll always have this, his fiber. You know, he wants to have this little fiber thing that he puts powder he puts in. And I always tell him that, man, you gotta skip that first meal, just like let it go. But he just, it's years and years and even decades of conditioning that they've been programmed with, right? TV commercials, talking to their friends, uh, just this, this environment is so much about eating cereal and waking up and eating eggs all the time. Do you think, like, what kind of, what has to happen to actually trigger this? Is it, is it some kind of critical mass that enough people have to come on YouTube and start talking about this? Or is it that some, some big investor has to put in a lot of money to get this health trend started? Because a lot of people still don't know about intermittent fasting, it, and it's so important, man. I mean, intermittent fasting is probably the, the, the most important trigger for my mental clarity mm -hmm. so far. Like, I mean, I, mean, I do 48-hour fasts. That's intense. And, That's really intense. And the, the largest I've done is 64 hours. Holy crap. And at that moment, you get this, uh, you get so many epiphanies because your, your, your body's like, it's not, it hasn't reached that survival mode, you know, that 72 hour uh, mark, but it, you, it's still trying to hustle mm -hmm. and trying to get you all the ideas that you need to get you to kill that animal. Mm -hmm. So it thinks, um, but what, what has to happen, man? Like what can, what can we do to provide this for people? Because I sincerely think that intermittent fasting is, is probably the most important thing that someone can do right away to trigger their health benefits. Yeah. What can we do? Well, um, on one level, I'm already I'm amazed at how many people that have saw one of my videos, read an article, and then just did it. Cool. So I've already turned tens of thousands of people onto internet fasting, and I'm like blown away. I'm like, wow, like people really, yeah. th like, cause you know, I, I, when I first started talking about it when I was 19, I was kind of gonna be like, oh, People are probably going to rip me up for talking about this whole thing, which has been really helping me, right. and not the case at all. With my followers, all the people who read my articles back in the day, you know, back in 2011, 2012, they were on it. So I'm already very impressed at how open-minded a lot of people are with this kind of thing, hmm. because it's one of those things where it's like we love, like we love eating, like Fuck humans yeah. naturally, we just love food. And it's like we like good food. We like, you know, steak. And French fries, and you know burgers, and, and be able to have like <laughs> you see how excited I am getting about this. But so many diet people and, mm. and personal trainers and, and, and dietitians, they're kind of projecting this idea. It's like that you oh you can't you, you it's bad. You don't eat French Carbs fries. Carbs will bad. kill you. Carbs will kill you. This will kill you. And they try and take like they try and take food away from us, mm. so we can only eat like really boring, bland foods like low fat, you know, mm. chicken, and it's like. Sure, I like chicken, but I want to be able to have other stuff too, and I want to be able to, you know, put butter on my potatoes, motherfucker. <laughs> so, um, but so I think people like intermittent fasting because it, I, I think it gives them that so much more freedom. Like, mm. I, I I heard someone talk about so like like yeah, my personal trainer was like would freak out if he saw me eating French fries, and that already gave, make me <laughs> ang that already made me like cringe. I'm like, oh my god, if I felt, if I couldn't have French fries, I would fucking stab someone in the neck. 
Like I would. Yeah. Like I want to. So I think on one hand, it's like <laughs> it's like people are, will get turned onto it because it's such a more enjoyable lifestyle. Gotcha. I can get. I can lean gotcha. down to you know six seven percent body fat, having chocolate at night, having you know French fries and awesome servings of meat, mm. and get down to six seven six to seven percent body fat because of intermittent fasting. If I had to eat six cool. meals a day, it couldn't do that. Um, so I mean, there's that. So I think it, it is shifting, and a lot of people are learning. Um, but then some people are a lot more stubborn to this whole idea that breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Mm. I think it's shifting. It might be harder to turn 40 and 50 year olds onto it, 60 year olds. Mm. Um, but I see a lot of my followers are 40, 50, and they're doing it and they freaking love it. They'll benefit but even more. They'll benefit even more. Yeah. It's even more more beneficial because it's harder. You know, when you're older, it's kind of you're not as active. You don't have as much muscle typically when you're 50. So your you know your metabolism isn't quite as high, and so you really need to do fasting if you want to lean down and get those amazing results. And it has you know those life extension benefits. So it's more important. Yeah, when you're older, um, there's still like it's still if someone's conditioned so hard, I think they have to have a power like a powerful reason. So maybe someone hits 50 and like you know what I've never been in good shape. I've never been able to see my abs. You know what I really want to see my abs, and they have this powerful reason. I really want to see my abs, and I want to know that you know I want to feel the best of my life even though I'm 50. So if they have that powerful reason, and then they're willing to experiment, then they'll do it. But if they're not, like if they don't have a powerful motivator for what they want to achieve, and they're just like, oh, I could do fasting, but I just like eating breakfast. They need to have that, that powerful goal of what they want. And they need to be able to see and envision that physique they want or that lifestyle they want. So mm-hmm. if you have someone that's 50 that's used to eating breakfast, that's 20 pounds overweight, and then you kind of, you get them to kind of envision the possibility of having this lean body, feeling more energy, more sex drive, better muscle definition, um, better clarity, you really, set, you really show them that this can happen, and it can happen fast, then all of a sudden, you just tell them like, look, one of the key steps is get rid of breakfast, go until lunch, and now when you have lunch, you don't have to have a fucking salad. You can have, you, you know, you can, you can have a 800 uh, calorie burger, you yeah, know, it's yeah. a little bit of french fries, yeah. because you fast it, and because we're fitting that in, and you, you show them that by doing this, you can be able to get lean, you know, having, you know, having the food you want, being able to fit in that Hawken Dawes bar or whatever at night, mm. and you show them that, that this, that this right here, this big, this awesome lunch and dinner, this little dessert or snack, will fit, and you'll be able to get leaner, and within three months, you'll be able to see your abs, and you show them that just by doing the breakfast, uh, skipping, bre- skipping breakfast, but now, skipping mm. breakfast is even hard, it's like, have that coffee, have that sparkling water, and within three, four, five days, it's gonna be so easy, and you show them this, and then maybe they won't believe you, but like, fucking try it, and I'll, I'll prove it to you. And they do it, and they see the results, and they're sold. Cool. So sometimes you have to show them that they can achieve this amazing goal, and, and, and show them that by doing this fasting, you can actually, you don't have to have just boring, you know, boring, you know, just boring meals, you can have the stuff you want, and get results, and then I think they'll be sold. But I think they have to see that like, first, and almost be sold in the fact that, oh my God, I can go up my, I can go for a dinner, you know, have, you know, an old fashioned, have, you know, yeah. some french fries and, you know, a piece of meat and get leaner. You know how people were so badly dying to hear that message. Right. So if they get it within the right, the right format, like they're going to be on it like, um, like fucking peanut butter and jelly. Like fat peanut butter. Peanut, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What about sleep, man? Yeah. What about sleep? Because a lot of pickup is, uh. You have to stay up till 5 a.m. and then you kind of sleep late. You fuck up your circadian rhythms. Um, you know, I've been on both sides. Being in Vegas for a year, sleeping at 6 a.m. every day, seven days a week, and it's pretty fucked. And now I'm sleeping around 10 p.m. every day, and waking up at six. I mean, for me, I, circadian rhythm is important. It's very important for my uh, just my well-being and testosterone, especially. What about you? Mm-hmm. How important? How, what what are the specific components of sleep that are important for you, and what have you su- seen in your clients? Well, I think, um, I mean, you can. I think people listening can just look at their own experiences with not getting sufficient sleep. Okay. Um, like one thing that can happen is if you're not sleeping enough, you might get more cravings. So it might be harder to to um, stick to you know. Uh, the kidney or calories. Good point. Um, so that's one thing that might happen is if you're not getting enough sleep, you might start to crave more and want to eat more as a response to being sleep deprived. You might have a harder time um, focusing gotcha. and you know being able to work hard and being able to be at your best because mm-hmm. you're you're low in sleep. Um, testosterone levels are negatively impacted, of course, from getting uh, not sufficient sleep. So I mean, you definitely want to get enough enough sleep and hopefully be able to structure your life in a way where you can get those, you know, seven, eight hours, nine hours, if that's your thing. Um, but at the same time, I would tell people 
some people, if whatever reason, they just their lifestyle, everything, they got kids, this and that, and they're, they're only able to get six hours a night, well, then I wouldn't stress about that. I wouldn't tell yourself, oh, I need to get eight hours. If you can't do it, just be like, you know what? Because I think a lot of times um, if we convince ourselves something's bad for us mm -hmm. and we can't change it, that will have negative consequences. Mm -hmm. So if I convince myself that, that like, let's say I can only, I can only, I, I, I work a job, I can only go to bed at, at three in the morning. It's like, oh, I'm never going to get results because I can only sleep at three in the morning. It's like, fuck you, you can get results. Fuck yeah. You, you know, you yeah, can, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, make the best of whatever situation you are in and tell yourself that this is going to work regardless. So it's long, like, so you're huh. going to bed at 3 a.m. It's like, like, you know, I bet you if I told you that the key to fucking getting the best physique possible, you go to bed at 3 a.m. <laughs> 3 a.m. is, it everything is. will change, man. <laughs> bed at, don't even go to sleep at 10. No, that's wrong. If you stay up late, those peak hours or your body's going to make the amazing results. And then you sleep in from 3 to 11. And that's where you, you know. So, I mean, you want to believe that whatever you're, if, if you can't change your situation, you want to believe it's going to be the best situation. Fuck yeah. So, because I, gotcha. I, you know, I, I see people that kind of get so neurotic about trying to have everything perfect. It's like you can't have everything perfect, you know, that it almost will work against you if you're stressed out about things you can't control. You know, it's like, oh, I'm going out to get eat out at a restaurant. It's like, what if they put like, you know, this kind of oil in my food? And it's like, it's like, <laughs> hey, just, just kind of focus on, you know, in, live yeah, your life. Yeah, do, do 80, the, 20. 80, yeah. 80-20. 80-20. Yeah, yeah, Like, focus on sure. the, the, the big overarching stuff. Um, you know, training consistently, tracking your results, you know, making sure you're getting sufficient protein and, and, and eating, you know, a balance of, of food, of fats and, and carbs and getting in, you know, the right amount of calories. Do that, you know, get like, you know, try and get sufficient sleep. And, you know, maybe you're someone that functions amazing on six hours. Maybe you need eight. Mm -hmm. Like do the best you can to get to have the best situation you can. Drink sufficient, well, lots of water. Go out and socialize and be relaxed and, 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 you know, don't become, don't drink like crazy. Like don't have 10 drinks. You know, if you want to have a few, that should be fine. But like, you know, try and just be balanced and do the best in your situation. But the worst thing I think, especially for, especially people that are like just stressed about every, like probably the worst thing for testosterone is just being stressed like crazy, right? Oh, yeah. Like the oh, yeah. high cortisol. And so if you're someone that, that's trying to have everything perfect, it's like, oh, I have to go to, you know, have to, you know, be in bed at, at nine and I have to have this and I got to make sure that I can't drink any water out of like plastic. It's like, you do, do the best you can, you know what I'm saying? Do, do the best you can. But if you just, the worst thing is, and I see this with some of my clients I used to coach is everything is that they're, 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 they're overthinking everything. Mm. They're overthinking everything. It's like, oh, am I allowed to have, what about the sugar and a sweet potato? Or, you know, what about this? And, you know, it's like, what, <laughs> if, like how, how many minutes before I eat should I train? And it's, and it's like, dude, just, just relax yeah. Yeah. and live your lifestyle. Do the stuff that matters. Yeah. Sure, if you, can switch, if you can make these lifestyle changes that are helpful, do it. But if, if in a certain day you, you can't and you're forced to, to, to do this, then just accept it and do the best you can and don't stress because I f truly feel that if, you're th if you think something's bad for you, the fact that you think it's bad for you is almost as bad as the fact that it is bad for you. Totally Because your, your mind totally is creating, agree. you know, you agree there? Oh, totally. Yeah. Agree. Totally so, agree. <laughs> yeah, the self-fulfilling prophecy. You know, I, a lot of the stuff recently, in the last couple of months, what I've been doing is I wake up and I visualize what I need to happen that day as it's already happened right. and then whatever I just visualized I write down in detail I, mean, I spent like five minutes on it and and I just kind of repeat to myself that this is gonna happen this is gonna happen and then I also focus on some short-term long-term goals right so for example getting a million YouTube subscribers right so I close my eyes and I imagine that in YouTube and then I got this also from psycho cybernetics where if you imagine your goals then your brain will figure out, it's called a serval mechanism, that's what he calls it. Mm -hmm. There's no real scientific name for it, but uh, your brain's creative processes will figure that out mm -hmm. because you're visualizing. And obviously you have to take action. Uh, it's not like some secret or something. You still have to take action, but let your brain do creativity as it needs to. Wow. Uh, yeah, it's really interesting. It, it helps me a lot. I've, I'm getting some pretty creative uh, uh, <laughs> strategies to, for growth and stuff. And we'll share that too. I'll share that with you. Um, the final thing, the final topic that I want to discuss before we get into the rapid fire round uh, mm -hmm. is supplements, mm -hmm. right? So a lot of the guys have deficiencies in different vitamins and minerals. So, you know, for example, magnesium, zinc, vitamin D, these are things that a lot of, especially RSD, you know, they don't go out in the sun as much, for example, and, and they might not be getting enough zinc because they might not be eating enough meat, for example. Um, what supplements do you focus on 
and what few supplements or even more that you recommend our guys take? Yeah, well, I mean, I've used some supplements in the past. Um, for the past couple of years, I haven't been taking anything. Okay. Um, I've kind of experimented with taking different stuff, um, and I kind of just like the freedom of not having to worry about taking all this stuff. Um, I think if it, you would ideally try and structure your diet in a way that supports, um, you know, sufficient nutrition intake. You know, in the summer, especially if you can get out and get some sun a few days a week, get the vitamin D. You know, if you can, uh, I think there's a lot of, um, like, if you can eat a lot of meat and get tons of, you know, zinc and, and really, you know, even beef has like creatine and stuff. Absolutely. So I think you should try and structure your nutrition in a way where you're getting a lot of good stuff, like eating some fruits and vegetables. Mm -hmm. um, and then as, the supplements, I mean, it's hard to quantify how much of a difference supplements are going to make as far as um, overall you know, health and, and, and built muscle building and fat loss. I know that for building muscle and fat loss, um, most supplements won't make much of a difference. If you're eating at the right same caloric deficit, fat loss is going to be pretty much the same. You know, if as far as building muscle, if you're making those strength gains, you're going to see muscle growth. Creatine can give you that initial kind of extra little bit of lean mass and improve, improvement in strength. But I kind of feel like with creatine, it's like you get that little boost, but then you're going to see muscle growth at a similar rate. So maybe you're able to put on a few more pounds of muscle and your lifts go up, you know, five, 10 pounds with creatine. It's not like you're, by continually take creatine, you're gonna experience a faster rate of progress. It might just be a little bit more ahead. So, hmm. I mean, there's supplements that, that are helpful. Like creatine for sure will improve strength and athletic performance. Um, but you get that little bit of boost and then you gotta keep taking it to, to still to maintain that. Um, but, but you know, I don't know, maybe some people would say that it has like another effect where it actually supports the ability to gain muscle over the long term and, and whatnot. But I don't focus much on supplements, although I do know for testosterone, like, yeah, if you have a magnesium deficiency, zinc deficiency, vitamin D deficiency, that can all um, hamper testosterone production. So definitely um, trying to make sure your diet supports um, those um, you know, vitamins and minerals is, is, uh, is, is important. And um, I mean, I don't know some people do like the greens, like the greens shake or the athletic veggie greens mm. and the athletic greens, whatever, the fish oils, you know, the vitamin D, and then they supplement the minerals. And that, that's probably a good thing to do. It can be beneficial. Um, I did that for several months and then I just stopped and I kind of just felt the same regardless. But, um, but yeah, I, I mean, there, there's research I've looked into a couple of years ago that said like magnesium can improve testosterone, vitamin D, um, zinc and so forth, um, but as far as supplementation, I don't focus he heavily on it. I actually kind of just tell people like, hey, I don't take supplements. I'm like, I just try and focus on hitting my, you know, my calories, my macros, doing intermittent fasting, and getting strong in the gym, um, and then I pretty much see amazing results. So I have, from the supplements that I've taken, as far as fish oils and vitamins and minerals and, and greens and stuff, I've seen very, very marginal um, I've seen like not like unquantifiable differences in my physique, um, and then I used to try and experiment with fat burners back in the day, and I just find you know what coffee is the is much better at blunting appetite. Yes. So I just focus on instead of taking all this caffeine from my fat burner, I'd rather just have my coffee, which is amazing. So um, there's definitely supplements that can be beneficial, but I haven't been able. But I, honestly, it's not like I don't bother with it. Which are your favorite supplements that you've had uh, good results with? So, uh, vitamin D, definitely. Yeah. Uh, because a lot of the time, even if I do get sun, it may not be enough. It also depends on where you are. Do you do like 2,000 or 4,000 or 6,000 I use a day? I do 10,000. 10,000, wow. 10,000, yeah. Because, uh, you know, it's, it's also absorption of vitamin D, right? So, you're taking 10,000 I use, but that, it's not all going to be absorbed by your body. Uh, and I try to get a lot of sun. I try to get half an hour of sun every day, but I just feel like you can never get enough vitamin D. Mm -hmm. um, that's really important. In yeah, so, yeah, so, so important, man. Even uh, uh, one of the strength camp trainers uh, recently asked me about vitamin D, and I told him, and he started taking supplements, you know, 10,000 IUs a day, and he, feel, like, he feels energy wow. right after taking it. So you do that, the, the magnesium stuff? I don't. Okay. Uh, I don't. I don't do anything for magnesium or for zinc. Uh, vitamin D is pretty much the only supplement I take and I've recently started taking uh, Maximum Vibrance which is Vibrant Health it's a company and I did a bunch of research on what are the best super greens in the market I think of it more 
of a insurance po- like Tim Ferriss talks about this. You know, your your greens insurance policy, especially if you're traveling, you, you're not going to be able to get all the broccoli and asparagus you need. So you just take a scoop of this greens drink and, and you're, you're good to go. That helps. Me. That, yeah, that's I, I was super taking, cool. I was taking athletic greens like a couple years ago, and then I just was like, dude, I was just like. I was just like, this is like 150 bucks Canadian a month I know. for some green stuff. I know. And I was taking it, and at first I was like, oh, I'm feeling better. But then, weirdly enough, um, I was like, I was like, oh, you know, feeling good. And then when I kept taking it, it just almost seemed like my body was just gravitating towards that extra amount of nutrition intake. It doesn't make any sense, but I, I remember like my first hit ta- was taking it. I actually noticed it's like, oh, I feel better. And then I just was taking it every day, and then it just kind of plateaued. And I stopped taking it. I just felt the same. But I mean, that doesn't mean anything because obviously, like, you might not feel every little bit of health benefit. Um, but I was just like, you know what? I don't want to take this green shit every day. I don't want to spend that 150 bucks on, on green stuff. And I'm like, you know what? My approach is just to be relaxed as possible, focus on the yeah, stuff yeah, that matters. And yeah. I don't want to tell my audience to spend 150 bucks no, a month on, no, on no, green no. stuff. It's not practical. It's not sustainable. And it's not necessary. Yeah. At the end of the day. All right, let's get into the rapid fire. Yeah. So basically, the way it works is I'm going to say one word. And I want you to give a few words or a sentence at max of whatever comes to your mind when sure. I say that word. Favorite exercise? I love, there's two man, it's a split. Oh. But I like the incline press, okay. incline bench press. I love being on the bench, pulling the weight up and just rocking up incline press. With a girl on top of you. With a girl, you saw that. I saw it. Yeah. I that was like, my, watch that video, yeah. that sick. And, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I had, a, I had a, this model girlfriend of mine at the time. She was sitting on the side of me and doing the incline press, and that was good because I couldn't cheat. I couldn't lift my butt up. That's right. So. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And my testosterone was probably doubled. Oh my god. It probably doubled. Oh my god. I, I want to do that. It's, it's <laughs> yeah. on my list now. <laughs> um, next word is testosterone. Yeah. Dude, you know what I think about when you say testosterone? My dad. My dad awesome. was just this, you know, big guy, just powerful, carried himself with so much energy, and just larger than life. And I just when I when you said testosterone. I was thinking about my father, just Love you it. know, just that guy, just huge testosterone. Um, yeah, and, and, and you know, I feel like with testosterone, the testosterone is ambition. Like the more testosterone you have, the more ambition, Fuck yeah. vicious you have. Oh yeah. And you could pro- I think the you, more you win, the more you win, man. I feel like you could almost put a clamp on your own testosterone levels by being a pussy. Yeah. I, I don't know. That's no, just, dude. So right. So right. right. Like yeah, because it's, it's something called the winner effect. Okay. Right. So f- simple. Quick story, Mike Tyson, when he got, he went to jail for raping that, that chick, 16-year-old chick. When he came back, Don King made him do two shitty fights that he won in like 30 seconds. It's because he wanted to make Mike feel like he was a winner, right? So when wow. you win, there's this sudden peak in testosterone, and then that stays for a few days. Wow. So it's, it's pretty interesting. Uh, but yeah, man, winning is testosterone, losing is cortisol. <laughs> Simple as that. Um, the next word is healthy food. Mm. Ah, steak, broccoli, potatoes. Love it. That's what I function best off of. Love I it. eat those meals Love and I feel great. And I know this, this huge shift, this huge YouTube thing trying to ba- like trying to yeah, bash yeah. on me. And it's like fuck you. Yeah, fuck that. Fuck <laughs> that. Fuck that. Stupid. Yeah. Uh, look at the results, man. Yeah. Results speak all. Yeah. Uh, the last word is dime. Dime. Stunning, hot, five foot nine, gorgeous model in a red dress. Oh, <laughs> love it! It's specific. Yeah. Thanks, yeah. man. Appreciate you uh, doing this mastermind. It's done, with like us. A ten out of ten. That's what I was yelling for. Oh, it is. It is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, it's cool. definitely not that dying. Yeah, no. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> no, you, you, said, you said the right thing. Yeah. So that's Kino Body, Greg O'Gallagher. Find him on Kino Body on YouTube, mm-hmm. KinoBody.com, mm-hmm. and now we know the secret. Kino Body is. Comes from Kino Escalation. Yeah. Which is so sick. I'm so happy I unraveled that for you. Unraveled it, man. First time ever. So thanks again, man. Yeah. We'll continue to do this stuff in the future. Awesome. And uh, that's it for this mastermind. See you on the next one. This is Dr. Testosterone.